Aliste is a small town in the province of Lecce, located in a valley between the two nearby hills, the so-called Serra Orientale and the Serra Costiera. Its territory, located on the western side of the Salento coast, is marked by slight hills, whose highest point is known as Madonna dell'Alto, due to the presence of an ancient chapel erected by the Basilian monks in the 10th century. The toponym of Alista derives from the word Ali, which would refer to the wings of the Archangel Michael. An ancient legend tells that in the 9th century, the Archangel saved a group of refugees who fled from nearby Felina, besieged by the Saracens. From that moment, the survivors founded the town of Alista, dedicating the name of the village to its protector. According to another interpretation, the toponym Alista or Cadiste, as it is still called in the local language, would mean beautiful and would refer to the particular environmental and morphological characteristics of the territory. Once the ancient village of Alista was surrounded by massive walls and there were also many houses equipped with a self-defense system. Of these types of houses, today the Casa a Torre, located behind the church of San Quentin, remains as a testimony. Most likely, given its topographical position, this particular house watched the entrance to the land that is the fortified village of Alista. Considered today as the pulsating and vital center of Alista, St. Quentin takes its name from the homonymous and beautiful church that overlooks it. Completely in line with the needs of the new urban planning and road system, it represents one of Alista's social and cultural governing points. The large paved space that it stands in front of the mother church is surrounded by small trees and benches which create the ideal place for a walk or a stop, away from the dangers of road traffic. The place where today the Church of St. Quentin stands was located outside the city walls, in open countryside. This choice was due to the need to create a place of worship accessible and easily reachable by the sick who were hospitalized in the nearby hospital of St. Quentin. Only in 1875 it became the parish seat of Alista. All the stylistic refinement of the church of St. Quentin develops in the second order. Here, mixed decorative elements are the corollary of the magnificent pavement in whose center a niche with a painting of the patron St. Quentin is located. The Park of Olives allows families and children to spend pleasant moments of relaxation in a place protected from traffic. The park is a tribute to the most important symbol of Salento, the olive tree. Like the vine, the olive tree was one of the plants known in Puglia since the 7th century BC. The numerous presence of this stupendous plant species is also due to the Basilian monks who, over the centuries, acquired possession of vast areas of Salento, deepening a strong stimulus to the cultivation of the olive tree.
Alista's story is closely linked to its fraction. Felina is a small and charming village in Salento that still preserves the ancestral charm of its peasant past. Felina is most likely of Greek or Messapian origin, as evidenced by many clues. The etymology of its name could derive from the Greek Felina, which means cane, lake. Due to the presence of these swampy places, it was easy in the Messapian age to find clay of high quality, and that is why another theory sees the name Felina translated with the Greek word Felina, that is, place of production of ceramics. The village develops entirely in the ancient city center, where tranquility and silence seem to reign supreme. On the small and narrow streets of the old town overlook ancient houses whose structure is very simple, but there is no shortage of precious houses painted with the pure white of lime and characterized by balconies and Renaissance windows. One of the most evocative squares of Fellina is Piazza Caduti, which represents the architectural synthesis of the entire ancient village. The square is enclosed among ancient houses that develop on one or two floors, some with a sloping roof, others with a typical flat roof. The common element of all the houses that frame Piazza Caduti is represented by small windows that overlook directly on it, as well as the relative entrance doors to the houses. Where there are, the balconies on the first floor are sober and characterized by a rough carpal railing, most often left with no plaster. All the houses are an integral part of a single stylistic and architectural design deeply linked to the typical dimension of the peasant and popular Salento. The castle of Felina was located on the eastern side of the ancient city walls and was erected by the will of the Bon Secolo family in the 12th century, becoming the outpost of defense of the nearby Messapian city of Ugento. The castle is one of the most interesting fortifications in Salento. It has a quadrangular system reinforced at the top by four towers of two different types. The fronts of the building are square, while those located at the back corners of the castle are circular in shape. The square towers date back to the 16th century and are very interesting from an architectural point of view, as they still retain some parts of the old military castle. The front elevation of the baronial castle is embellished by the presence of a long and continuous balcony with carpet balustrades built by Pignatelli. The portal of access to the castle, once surmounted by the noble coat of arms, is characterized by a round arched structure and presents a frame with passes, which makes it imposing and sumptuous.
The balcony located on the first floor of the building was the architectural element that allowed the castle of Felina to take on the appearance of a noble palace, giving the whole building a stately appearance but without losing the connotations of a military structure. Walking through the outskirts of Aliste, you can meet two menhirs, today still perfectly preserved, despite the pitfalls of time. The first is the menhir Terenzano, located in the territory of the homonymous homestead. The menhir is set in a dry stone wall, in the same position that was found and catalogued in the early 60s of the 20th century. Another very interesting men here is the Ninfil. It is a rectangular base with a long side placed in the north-south direction, endorsing the theory that once the megaliths were also used as hearths compasses as well as places of worship. The particularity of this men here is the engraving of the number 30 on its western facade, whose meaning is incomprehensible today even though it is most probably due to the intervention of contemporary man for some practical purpose. The Menhir is so named for the presence of the nearby Grotta Ninfil. The cave is completely immersed in lush vegetation and has been named since the times of the Mercedians to the nymphs responsible for the protection of all the fresh waters of the earth. In fact, the Nymphium of Helena is located a few meters from the slopes of the land, from where, even today, in some periods, spring water gushes. Another example of Salentomegalithism are the Specchia, which are small hills or stones piled up in the highest points of the territory. Many researchers believe that the specchia were monumental tombs erected in honor of a leader or chief. For this reason, many specchia of the Salento have been destroyed in order to unearth hypothetical treasures covered by them. These were the so-called acciatura. Alista and Felina are also known for the splendid and long rocky coastline which houses the two beautiful marinas of Capilungo and Posto Rosso. Posto Rosso is a pearl of the Ionian coast of Salento and so probably called for the typical reddish color of some points of the cliff. Here is the social gathering point of the Alista Marina known as Piazzetta Pilella, a large paved area in the shape of a crescent located close to the low cliff. From Piazzetta Pilella starts a long and suggestive walk along about 2 km that connects Posto Rosso to Capilungo, the other marina of Alista. Capilungo is a coastal town close to the sea, which has now become a top-level tourist destination due to the tranquility of the place and the clearness of its crystalline sea. The coast is morphologically very jagged and low and allows easy access to the sea. 
Here you can try snorkeling thanks to the beauty of the rocky seabed and the particular clarity of the water. Capilungo is also characterized by the flourishing Mediterranean vegetation which grows here spontaneously. All this allows visitors to the Marina Ovalista to enjoy a stunning view, savoring the scent of saltiness while immersed in the vegetation of its cliff and the blue of its crystalline sea.